Now please welcome to the stage our next performer making her vamp debut, Sarah Sharp. When Zoom became my classroom, I imagined myself as the host of my very own television show, 11th grade English with Miss Sharp. Fluidly instructing, peppering my lessons with jokes met with wide applause, and sharing information that would bring my student audience to tears of gratitude. <laughs> but here's the thing with audiences. You can see them. When your wit is on full display, you can see the range of reactions. They smirk, smile, maybe nod in acceptance of the information you're offering. On Zoom, you don't get that, especially when the cameras are off. At the start of the pandemic, many school districts adopted a policy to allow students to turn their cameras off during Zoom instruction. The purpose was to keep students from feeling uncomfortable about where and how they lived. A broom closet in a two-bedroom apartment doesn't have the same social currency as a Rancho Santa Fe pool house. I supported not requiring cameras, but I don't think many parents, regardless of what neighborhood they lived in, considered how it felt to be a teacher speaking to a largely faceless void. which I found surprising because everyone saw how awkward every late night show became without an audience. <laughs> At the end of the day, my face was sore from my exaggerated expressions. I was a marionette, spinning and sparkling for the students, so they had something to entertain them during the hours they were locked down in their homes. I made my Zoom background a picture of the real classroom we weren't in in an attempt at normalcy. It was all a lie. During most lessons, I popped into a breakout room to see how things were progressing. Instead of interrupting a lively conversation about the rhetorical analysis of Hamlet's final soliloquy, I was greeted with blank screens and muted mics. I found I developed the uncanny ability to call out to those who were not with us and summon them from the void. Daniel. Daniel, I called out, like a medium bidding the dead to appear. Are you with us, Daniel? <laughs> Daniel was with us, at least spiritually. Uh, yeah, sorry, miss, my mic wasn't working. I was always amused when I could hear the keyboard through a student's mic as they typed, my mic isn't working. <laughs> Funny how the pandemic brought to light an epidemic of malfunctioning mics. I bowed out of the room to allow new threads of communication to flow, knowing full well the disembodied voices I had summoned would go back to wherever they came from. The curriculum I had painstakingly planned for the day wouldn't matter because the only thing that would occur would be the viewing of hundreds of TikToks. Social media would have me believe a color-coordinated classroom with fun posters is the key to good teaching. I mean, shit, all I had to do was rewrite the lyrics to a hip-hop song and I could have wound up on Ellen. Yeah. Why was I here? I was in the last year of my 20s and I had a solid career ahead of me, but I felt like an imposter. I entered the teaching job market in the spring of 2016. My school district hired me even though, during my interview, I couldn't coherently answer the question of why I wanted to become a teacher. <laughs> the only thing I felt confident about in my interview was my outfit. I wore my power color. And I let my smile reach my eyes, hoping I'd connect with the panel of administrators desperately trying to fill the massive gaps in their teaching roster. Fortunately, I managed to recover from the initial stumble and presented myself as someone who could do this job and maybe even thrive in it. Now it was December of 2020 and there I was on Zoom watching the condensation form on my wine glass as my students did, or at least pretended to do, 20 minutes of silent reading. <laughs> that was one of the perks of teaching from home. I could throw back a Pinot Grigio during a long, leisurely lunch before my, 
before my sanity walks around my neighborhood. Sometimes, my boyfriend emerged from his all-hands meeting hoping for some late afternoon action. That was another perk. I'd boot up my next class ready to re-engage my smile, hoping my students' internet connection would hold long enough so they could see it reach my eyes. In January, my district began talking about a hybrid learning model, half in person, half on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> the parent pressure to get students back in the classroom was mounting. At the monthly school board meetings, parents had three minutes each to share any thoughts or ideas with the board about these issues. 30, <laughs> 30 or more parents digitally lined up to vent their frustrations with current education while the board members just sat there and took it. After a day of spinning around on Zoom for my students, I watched the board meeting on my laptop where the denizens of affluent neighborhoods demanded teachers return to the classroom. I wasn't fully paying attention. Instead, I had my phone at arm's length exchanging memes with my coworkers. I began to feel a kinship with the students who did the same thing during my lessons. The memes weren't much help. Those parents seemed to be trying to convince everyone that everything I had done thus far during the pandemic wasn't worthy of a salary. Endless to-do lists, mandatory meetings that offered no guidance, daily emails to their failing students who hadn't appeared in class in weeks. My efforts weren't always working, but I still thought, contrary to what many of those angry parents believed, I deserved to get paid for it. My therapist advised me to stop attending those meetings. <laughs> I reminded myself that it was only a few obnoxious parents who thought I should be out of a job. It wasn't every parent. But that's when they organized themselves. They created Facebook groups to share their opinions of what schools and educators should be doing to help their kids. They formed legal coalitions to sue districts and state governments. And they posted videos of us teaching on Zoom to prove what shitty teachers we were. <laughs> oh, just wait. <laughs> The first week of hybrid learning was rough. Half of my students in class behind plexiglass shields and half at home barely paying attention on Zoom. It felt like splitting my body in half with a butter knife. A couple of weeks into the new model, I returned home and got a call from my best friend as I cracked open a white claw. <laughs> she didn't even bother to say hello, just launched straight into it. Did you hear about Lori, she said? She's on Fox News. I pulled up Google News on my laptop. There was my colleague, Lori, the subject of a story about a teacher who lost her temper during Zoom class. <sighs> One of her students had asked if there was an Asian student union on campus, why wasn't there a white student union? Lori shut the student down forcefully and mercilessly. But the kid had screen captured the entire conversation and handed it off to his parents, who promptly posted it to their Facebook page, already saturated with anti-teacher invective. Within days, Lori was getting death threats. A police cruiser parked outside her family's house for a week. I hung up the phone, my insides feeling thrashed around like a boat in a storm. By that point, I started to miss the faceless void of Zoom, where none of this had happened yet. My new normal was living in fear that my attempts to do my job could get my family's faces posted on the internet and a cop car parked outside my home. I chose the path of avoidance when I returned to work the next day. I looked at my students' masked faces and forged on with my regularly scheduled programming. If I just buckled down and did my job, I thought it would all begin to make sense and feel normal. It was the only thing I could control. Two days later, an emergency staff meeting was convened after school. I logged in to another Zoom call, hoping for some practical tools to process what happened to our colleague. Instead, we were told a student at our school took their own life. Administration told us counselors would be on standby. Then they logged us off. 
My mind coiled up to protect what was left of me. I didn't know the kid, but my students did. And in less than 24 hours, those students would be back in my classroom expecting me to know what to do. The next day, I looked at my students through plexiglass shields, eyes rimmed with dark circles, masks, tear stains, sagging past their noses. The half who were present and not on Zoom looked at me for answers, and I struggled to find the words. I realized my lesson planning, even if it was perfect that day, wouldn't help them process it. A few months later, in April, on the brink of our COVID shutdown anniversary, I heard an all-call announcement instructing teachers to look at their emails. What now, I thought. I tried to keep calm, composure, in front of my curious students, but my cortisol spiked and my hands felt weak as I refreshed my email for the third time. My principal wrote, staff, please make a soft evacuation to the backfields at this time. More information to follow. What the fuck was a soft evacuation? <laughs> Would my students know where the backfields were? My sense of direction was shit on a normal day, so was I necessarily the best person to take them there? I told everyone to grab their things, and we joined the flow of students making their way to the back of campus. There was an unsettling silence creeping through the school as we found none of us knew what was going on. Some teachers had enough mind to grab all the evacuation items, including a bucket that functioned as a communal bathroom. I started making a mental list of all the students I would put on latrine duty. Kids and teachers roamed from group to group, sharing whatever information they could find. I huddled with teachers I hadn't seen in almost a year and vetted student theories as to why we were all removed from the buildings we'd been so desperate to return to. The dark thoughts faded as I caught up with the people I forgot I missed. Apparently, the evacuation had been called because of a bomb threat. I looked at my students, mingling with their friends. For all that they had been through, a bomb threat was very on brand. <laughs> Truly poetic. And honestly, Bring it on. Everyone on that field had been forged in the fires of Zoom. Puny threats made us laugh. <laughs> a buzz rippled through the crowd as everyone got the all clear email. The SWAT team, which in my head was a fully armed SWAT team, was confident the threat wasn't real. After three hours in the sun, we couldn't return to the building to grab our remaining items. The bomb sniffing dogs were busy sweeping the rest of campus just to be safe. As everyone began stirring towards a line of buses, a wayward student asked me what would happen next. I shrugged and told him the only thing I did know. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>